There's so many. Okay, I'm killing Justice League. I'm marrying Iron Man, but I'm snogging the hell out of the Winter Soldier. <laughs> How about <That's> you? Great. <laughs> Snog Cyborg from Justice League. Okay. Kill Bucky. Yeah, kill Bucky. Oh, yeah, marry Iron Man. He's, He's rich. He's a billionaire, yeah. Listen, oh, I'm set. <laughs> I've always wanted to marry a billionaire. Or yeah. Like an, an, some like it hot. Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> I, I, I would avoid the, the cyborg from Justice League. Yeah, it doesn't seem very, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like, he doesn't seem like a good hugger after the snog. Yeah. Robert Downey has some, has some voluptuous uh, features to him. So maybe a, a good snog with the Iron Man. And then I guess we're marrying him. It's a three-way you know marriage. I, 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 you know, I, I, and I'd probably, you know, uh, I'd probably do the married with the Iron Man. So oh, that's go. smarter. There you go. I wonder if he sign, makes you sign a prenup. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what I'm doing. Do you want to go first? I'm really good friends with Josh, so yeah, I'd marry Cable. We'd, we'd be buddies for life. I'd uh, snog uh, Robocop. <laughs> and then I'd, oh, I'd definitely kill Inspector Gadget. Okay, I have the same answers and here's why. So I'm gonna marry Cable because do you see what he went through to protect his family? Yeah. He went back in his time. Yeah. Um, so definitely marrying Cable. He's also super fly. Um, definitely snogging Ro Robocop for obvious reasons. Um, that's a robo snog. Um, <laughs> and then I'm killing Inspector Gadget. He's, yeah. Come on. I'm gonna avoid Robocop. I remember when I saw that movie and you know, it was pretty badass. I wouldn't want to I wouldn't not want to get, get in the way. And to me, there was always something about adorable about Inspector Gadget. So that 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 might be the the, the marry one. I feel yeah. like he'd be able to fix everything in your house. There'd never be anything that was wrong. Cable and Deadpool too <laughs> Uh, I think I'm avoiding again, too. Yeah. Snog 7 of 9. Kill Detective Spooner. And Mary Multicle. I'm going to Snog 7 of 9 because wow, wow, wee wah. I'm going to, I'm going to kill uh, Spooner, too. He, he makes some big mistakes in iRobot. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, I'm going to marry Motoko as well. I'd avoid hit uh, Mr. iRobot because I don't think he understands robots at all. And Alita, you know, is a robot, is a cyborg, so I'm gonna, we, I think we should avoid him, John. I, I don't, I don't disagree with that. And uh, you know, uh, Motoko from uh, I might avoid also. <laughs> it's a little too badass for me. Snog was seven I, to nine. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd go with that too. I'm marrying Doctor Octopus. I feel like that would be like a fun time. Yeah, he, and, he, and he was really good to his wife. Yeah. I'm gonna kill the Daleks. Oh, oh, I'm gonna so oh, yeah. Snog Darth Vader. Snog and Darth Vader. Marry like Dr. Octopus and then kill the, the Daleks. Because Darth is like an angry snog. <laughs> and that sometimes that's good. Yeah, but, but he would breathe really creepily while you're sinking. <sighs> I think, to me, this is an easy answer. Because it's the same for all of them. I am avoiding them. <laughs> I, uh, it's a lot of villains. I, I, I am, you know? <laughs> Killing Amok, which is Gruishka in the film. Snogging Zapan. Look at that bot! Yeah. Cybernetic Snog. Uh, and I'm gonna marry Alita. Let's see, I'd kill... Yeah, I'd kill uh, Gruishka there. This is I a think hard Snog one Alita and yeah. marry Zapan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the pain would be and get the so Damascus fun. blade. Alita, Alita, Alita would love me and leave me. She's got a journey to go on, so yeah. I, I couldn't marry her. That would just end up bad. I love me some Ed Scrine, so I think I think we'd I think we'd do really well together. I think we're gonna get married. Snog Alita, because I'm, I'm I'm used to it. And then uh, I mean you gotta avoid Grishka. He's he's just not a happy man. And and I I I'd, I'd avoid um, personally Zapan a little bit. He he, he intimidates me and Garishka is just too fierce and uh, I would follow Alita anywhere. <laughs> well, one one of my favorite times was when um so Mahershala came and he kind of had to shoot oh, out yeah. all of his scenes. Had to finish him up quick. Cause cause he's like nominated for an Oscar. His wife was about to have their a baby. First baby, and so everything was really coming together for Everything Marshall. was happening at once for him. Yeah, so there was such a palpable energy, yeah. and also he's just really a And he's joy. having to figure that character out, which yeah. is a dual role, and it's that switch that he does, and he's still, you know, finding that. So yeah. he was, uh, the pressure was on, but a great pressure. Yeah, we really used that. he's so that. cool. 
and call him under pressure too. He's the best. That it was just by we finished and we give him his congratulations. He's done and he's about to go fly up and see his baby be born and then he won the Oscar like a few weeks later. I mean, it was like crazy. Yeah, that, that was. That was like magic. Yeah, that was like magic. And then cra crazily enough, I saw this was one of those mind mind fuck moments where. I went to see Moonlight with Christoph Waltz. <laughs> That's right. Because we would hang out, you know, in our wow. off time. So I'm just like, I'm watching it on my Marshall Ali. That's a Christoph Waltz, you know? That's it crazy. was so That was fun, yeah. Awesome. That was just so awesome. Yeah. I had a great time working with Christoph. I found him particularly funny. because He's such a good actor, but also he's very, he's, he's good value. He's very entertaining. And Mahershal is great. And really, it was just nice working with the cast. When we filmed the cathedral scene where Kean and Rosa are on top of the ca cathedral, because I think that for me and watching them pull that off dramatically, you see their relationship develop right in that moment. It's also the scene where Alita says one of my favorite lines, which is, I'm just an insignificant girl thrown out with the trash, because that embodies what this story is all about. It's a story of telling people that no matter how insignificant you think of yourselves, there's still a hero inside of you. And in that scene, it's about his dreams. And his character changes because he realizes Later, that's not what's important, those dreams, that he can find what's important right there. Yeah. I'd have to say, as far as um, process goes, there wasn't, me you know, they created such incredible, vast sets. So what was actually fun is there's only really one scene that I worked on full, full green screen, and it was this big supply tube scene, um, one of the last scenes of the film. And being able to work on that, being able to put the motion capture suit on for the first time, uh, that was was just you know really cool to kind of see see all the the thing, all the tasks that they were going to have to do, and and how they were going to pull it off. You know, I think it's interesting because you, you you we're giving you two very different answers because my perspective is from the outside. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm the observer. I'm the watcher. Kean's from the first person. He's from the inside. This is what I did. This is why it was exciting to me. And yeah. I think that's a very interesting dynamic. Yeah. We were filming the kissing bridge scene, and uh, you know, it's this very intimate, sexy in a way, a very lovely, beautiful moment where they kiss for the first time. And you know, um, uh, Kean Johnson, he wanted to put some of my hair behind my ear, but I'm wearing a do rag with a helmet on. So uh, the brilliant minds <laughs> uh, in the hair department decide, you know, what we're gonna do, we're just gonna cut like a three-inch panel of yarn, and we'll just Velcro it to the side of your head. Yeah. So just, you have something to interact yeah, just with. Something to like, you know, uh, yeah, interact. It looks perfect with. on the, the um, final product, but yeah. It but seems that was silly. Insane. It tests their acting skills. It really did, and we laughed so <laughs> hard because there's already kind of jitters when you're like working with your buddy, and now you're gonna make out, um, and someone's spraying water in your face because it's raining. Um, so it was already <laughs> the environment is a little bit silly, and that just took it to the next. And yet level, they know how so important like, it is to yeah. the movie, so they got to nail it. Yeah. So, so it's all a that very is just special so great. moment. Yeah. I think it actually helps to have yeah. that kind of stuff happen. Yeah. It's always great when the rain starts coming down <laughs> and it's like, oh wow, this is this is a real uh, this is a real movie moment. I think what makes those moments so great is when you feel so comfortable with the person and then you feel, you know, there's this kind of like family feeling about it all that, you know, everyone's kind of in it together and that's why the you know, that's why the chemistry ends up really working. It was it wasn't it wasn't this kind of like, oh god, here we go with the kiss. Like it was very much like, you know, this is our job. We we, we care about the movie, we care about each other and I think that's why it, you know, it ended up working in the end. And, and you picked one of my, my favorite scenes um, in, in the film because that's a scene where uh, she asked this question, you know, does it bother you that I'm not completely human? And with such sincerity, Kian says, you're the most human person I know. And there's this tenderness that Rose and Kian brought to the intimacy of that moment that as an audience, you just believe it 100%. Whoa. Wow. Can I have it do anything? I can have it do anything? Fly? Mm -hmm. I'd like to fly. Fly on it? Yeah, I want to fly on it. Yeah. I think I want to fly on a cyborg. 
You know what? It's just a different change in the morning. You you know, you're used to going and putting on your costume for that day and getting into hair and makeup. This was just a, a different process in the morning. You go in, uh, you put on your uh, wetsuit, basically, uh, with all the infrared markers, and you zip up, you put the do-rag on, you put the helmet on. You do a little bit of beauty makeup, because there are these reference cameras, so from behind the scenes and for um, Alita's actual look, we had a little bit of a small cat eye um, so then they put like a plastic mask on you with little holes drilled into it to get all of the markers into their precise location on your face because they're tracking your, <laughs> the movements in your face your expressions um, so it's just a different process in the morning we shot in Texas <laughs> and it was extremely hot so uh, I was overheating a little bit and you can't drink too much water because you'll have to pee all the time and then you'll have to de-rig from the whole suit because you're really, um, you're rigged in there. So when you're in, you're in and it takes, you know, 15, 20 minutes to get de-rigged and then to go to the bathroom and then come back. So you don't want to hold anyone up. Um, so there were just things that you had to uh, work out, but um, after a while, like anything else, you, you just get used to it. The only thing was just temperature. It was just, you know, keeping your temperature down because uh, it does get a little hot, but it, it's pretty comfy. Yeah. Uh, just don't get uh, stuck to anything because it's very, very Velcro. Uh, <laughs> it would stick to just about anything. Um, but man, it was, uh, it was just so cool to be able to see you know, you have to do all these little exercises so that they, they gather all the dots on your on your body. Um, I'm probably botching this, no, you're this doing whole great. thing. But uh, yeah, just kind of, you know, figuring, finding out how they're able to, you know, monitor all these movements on your body. You have to, you know, touch your toes and do all these little things. So I think just learning the process of, of performance capture was really interesting. I think that, I think that it's great that this young girl, I think it's a great, you know, for girls going to see movies, she's at the center of it. She's this young girl. She has to come to terms with who she is and understand herself and learn about herself. And ultimately, it's like she's going to take on the system and she's going to fight for justice and she's going to do it by herself. I mean, she has allies, but she's not dependent on anyone to bring her any special you know, tool or object or take her on her quest. She's on the quest on her own, on this journey. And I think that's great. There's a lot of it is this CG because it goes so fast, but everything up until that we, we film. Getting that right, because that moment with the script originally always is what got me wanting to make the movie. When we find out they're all trying to kill her, the dad's trying to warn her, and she sizes up. So we had all the actors there. So she actually was there with all of them. At the Checking them line. all out and saying, who's trying to kill me? All of them trying to kill her. And just the looks that she gives them, where you see she's not afraid, but she's focused. And she's gonna go for the ball. I mean, it was amazing. So yeah. she captured that determination. I was like, yes. And I love that so line. Excited. She's like, before he tells her, she's like, wheels up. She's like, hey, everybody, <laughs> take it on, take it easy on me, guys. And uh, and then Ido comes in, like, they're trying to kill you. And she's like, Oh, okay. Yeah, changes. She goes into into, into battle mode. Yeah, yeah. So I did some skating for sure, and I think I got uh, a little cocky to the point where there was this one scene where I, you know, Hugo kind of skids up and stops standing right in front of Alita, and you know, says, "Hey, how's it going?" And I was like, "I, you know, I can, I can nail that." Uh, first take, I skid up and just hit the ground. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give it another go. First take, slide. And I'm trying to be as suave and, uh, you know. Leading, leading man as possible, and I was just falling on my butt every single time. <laughs> no, he's not giving himself enough credit. Now, we, we did this, a full-on screen test with Kean with some other actors, and he rose to the top easily. Um, and we knew about his acting chops. What I didn't know in the moment was his physical abilities. I didn't know, for example, that he was in Billy Elliot on Broadway and that he could dance and he could move. And he picked up the, this rollerblading right away and it makes it very natural in that sequence. And that sequence was, was fun for me because not only did we have Kean and, and us, other people, but we had some of the top inline skaters in the world, five-time world champions, performing yeah. these these things right out there on a set. And when you're on the set, it wasn't again green screens. They were doing these gags, and the crew is just watching it in amazement with their <laughs> mouths open. Yeah, even even the first day before we'd even, even were shooting, they were just kind of like playing around on set, and some of the tricks that they were able to pull off with such finesse, uh, you know, it, it, it was absolutely incredible. And I think that's why it worked so well in the end, you know, 
the, the the shoes that you know they're wearing in Alita are are motorized, and it was cool to see that you know these athletes were able to create what it would look like if they were motorized, even though they were really just pushing themselves.